Hey guys, let me clarify a whole bunch. So don't skip to the end of this video. Actually watch the whole thing if you want. But at the end, the day I shot this, I started talking about like the copyright and everything. And I think I'm good. I think Swag Bro, if your video is having gotten marked or anything, I think you use proper amounts of clips and everything and the timing of it. I just was a little bit scared of YouTube system. So don't worry, I'm not going to stop reacting to the series. Also update, really cool to see Potted Plant now on board with the series. Appreciate you guys. Like I really like, um, sorry, I'm like low key. I know this might be sappy, not trying to cry. I had a insane two nights. I can't go really I can't really spread the details right now, but that was my bro making a comment in the comment section that I was in a pickle, but I'm really glad to everyone out there who can like see my character through videos and everybody that supports me in person too, because it's just, I've really created the life I live. I'm, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to go on too much rant or get sad, but I just want to say really appreciate it. It feels like just being part of a community. So and I, and I love the YouTube space, so I'm glad to see that Swag and Potted Plant. Potted Plant is the maker of the iceberg, and Swag is the bomb-ass YouTuber tying it all together in videos. And Plant Planet is the foundation, so it's really cool to see y'all boys. Um, thank you guys. Thank you to everyone who is liking and supporting the videos. Um, and yeah. And shout out again, Elephant Man, because these are the three na three names that are stuck in my head for this whole iceberg. Elephant Man, the one who recommended the series through email. Swag for giving me permission and said, like, gave me the hell yeah. And Potted, who also said the hell yeah, but also said, like, the other stuff for throwing my own flair. Appreciate you guys. Disregard the end of the video. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, I'm out of here. Much love and moonlight. Enjoy the video. All right, guys, we're in for a long one. Let's go. Dining Room or There Is Nothing is a short film released on YouTube by a man named David Earl in 2000. This was weird. I remember this. This weird, like, creamy lady right here. Like, she has a spoon. I'm pretty sure they were like yogurt, right? Or he was like digging in his head and eating. Or it's like, I didn't know it was an entire family, if that's what we're about to see. 2006. It starts with the camera zooming in on a woman sitting at a dinner table in a room that seems to be on fire. She opens her eyes, says something in reverse, and then face plants into her bowl. The camera oh, yeah. then begins slowly zooming out, and the film begins playing in reverse, revealing what she was saying to be there is nothing. It's another one of those classic Gen Z slash millennial childhood trauma type deals, and there are a lot of fake conspiracies. I'm See, listen to that. Gen Z slash millennial. What exactly this video is. But really, it was just made by some guy who wanted to make an unsettling video. <laughs> the Coconut Song is an animation created by Jeff Lau uploaded to YouTube in 2010 about how coconuts aren't nuts, they're actually fruits. The song used in the video is a cover of the song to Coconut Nut by Filipino singing group Smoky Mountain. The animations are clearly made in MS Paint and use a lot of outdated references and memes, but it's really charming to look at 12 years later. Before YouTube settled on the likes and dislikes system for rating videos it has now, YouTube at one point had a system where you rated videos from 1 to 5 stars, and instead of telling everyone to like the video, they would tell you to rate 5. It sounds- I think I remember that. Or at least remember seeing videos talking or referencing this. Sounds cool, since it technically gives you more ways to express how much you liked or disliked a video, but a huge percentage of votes on videos were just 1 or 5 stars, effectively making the feature useless, and they changed over to likes and dislikes in 2009. YouTube Groups was yet another removed feature from when YouTube was still trying to find itself way back around in 2008 to 2009. Oh wow, it's almost like YouTube Groups became YouTube memberships now, so that's very interesting. From what I can tell, <laughs> they worked a lot like Facebook Groups, and you could make discussion threads as well as post videos to them. I can't really find much about this feature, so I'm assuming it got removed due to a lack of use, but it's still an interesting piece of history nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> Diabetes. In 1987, in an advertisement for the medicine company Lip Bro, this meme went absolutely nutty, man. I, I remember hearing this all the time. 
We got diabetes or whatever he said. I hope he plays the clip. It's be medical. They used the actor Wilford Brimley to be the spokesperson for their company for the next 30 years, which made sense because he was a pretty prestigious actor starring in movies such as The Thing and The China Syndrome. And he was also diagnosed with diabetes and he wanted to spread awareness. <laughs> it made a lot of sense, but there was one fatal error with him doing this. He didn't know how to say diabetes. Yes, Wilford Brimley is sometimes known as the infamous diabetes guy because he would say diabetes as diabetes every single time. His mispronunciation would be soon parodied on shows like Family Guy and it would also have... I think it should be the new canonical way we say diabetes though. I, I mean diabetes. You see? <laughs> agreements all throughout the early days of YouTube. Sadly, in 2020, he passed away. Oh. Well, hey, you know, good things come to an end. I don't know, genuinely. Never, never mind, let's continue. Mariana Mortegard Glesgorv is a YouTube creepypasta and urban legend. The story goes that there's this YouTube video that's 20 seconds long and features a red tinted picture of a guy staring at you, which is actually a video <clears> that exists. However, the story says that there's a longer two minute version somewhere in the deepest recesses of YouTube. The video was apparently removed from YouTube because 153 people specifically gouged their eyes out and mailed them to YouTube's main office in San Bruno, California. Apparently one YouTube employee watched the video and started crying and screaming after 45 seconds until being put under sedation like YouTube is the fucking SCP foundation. <laughs> Obviously it's a hoax. The man in the video is identified as a random dude named Brian Cortez. Wonder how he's doing. I actually really like this entry because I love dumbass creepypastas like this and the fact that people actually had to make videos debunking it is just absolutely hilarious to me. <laughs> I feel like the way Swegwin read that was not that it was a hoax. Like, what part of it was a hoax? The entire thing was a hoax? That the video was making people do this? Or just one aspect of it? You know, because I could see someone watching that video and probably breaking down crying because they probably just can't comprehend what is going on. I don't actually know. But... I think that's just my own mind not separating it I'm over here like, wait, what part of it was a hoax? But he obviously means the entire thing was a hoax. But still, yeah, I love things like that too. <laughs> His SCP comment was fire. All right, let's continue. I briefly talked about this in tier 2 with the scare PewDiePie stuff, but YouTube Red is the former name of YouTube Premium. The service removes all ads on videos and offers original content. In 2018, they rebranded Red to Premium. Yeah. But I have a hunch that they did it to avoid confusing them with RedTube, which is a porn site. Not much else to say <laughs> since this isn't even a removed feature, just a re- Whoa, wow, bro, wow, yeah. Named one. I bet the people subscribe to YouTube Red. <clears throat> and YouTube Premium. But Premium, YouTube Premium. Isn't there a Premium feature? <laughs> the girl sees red ghosts and run. Okay, so this one actually kind of creeped me out when I first saw it. There's this video uploaded in 2012 by a channel called Angel Ruiz. Angel? Angel? I, I don't know. Point is, the video is titled Girl See Ghost and Run. <clears throat> it features a pair of possibly twin sisters eating food at a small plastic table talking to their mom. One of the girls looks into the darkened kitchen behind them and looks visibly creeped out before beginning to cry and run away. The other laughs at her for being a pussy and then turns around. She then lets out this fucking blood curdling scream before also running away. So, what happened? I doubt it was staged because these kids look like they're two or three, so I doubt they're good enough actors. Maybe it was just a mean prank pulled by the parents, like they put something there off camera that looked scary. Maybe it was something that wasn't a ghost, like a big spider or something. Or maybe it really was a ghost, I don't fucking know. On second thought, it probably was a prank since the mom is laughing the entire time they're crying. Also, like, why were they filming in the first place? That's yeah. something you gotta remember about these kinds of videos, that there's usually never an explanation for things like that. Still, it's a fun video to freak people out with. They're not only freaking out and pranking their kids, but also doing the same to the millions of people who watch this video on YouTube, so it just works on all accounts. Good shit. <laughs> the Viner Invasion refers to when the video hosting app Vine was shut down. If you don't remember what Vine is, you're too young to be watching this video, and especially some of the later tiers. But basically it was- the See, but that's what's wild is like, if- Okay, because it brings me back to this whole discussion on what is Gen Z and what's not Gen Z. 
doesn't saying like somebody would be too young to remember Vine be a Gen Z thing? I don't know. That's just me. The predecessor to TikTok back when dinosaurs ruled the land. Vine was shut down in early 2017, and when that happened, it caused a great migration of Vine stars Amazing. and their fan base to swarm YouTube. People we got from this were people like Logan and Jake Paul, who many consider be They came from Vine, bro? <laughs> I did not know that. Be really obnoxious. In 2017, there was a large uptake in clickbait, and some people say that the Vine invasion directly led to stuff like Elsa Gate and 3AM videos. Okay. Was Elsa Gate in the earlier tiers, or is it, is Elsa Gate coming? Because why? I feel like I can't remember Elsa Gate, or it's just I'm like drawing a complete blank. Like th these videos are pretty long, but the earlier tiers were like 30 minutes, so I can't remember him talking about Elsa Gate. I don't know why. Did I make like a subconscious block in my mind to not remember Elsa Gate? But the 3 a.m. videos, yeah, oh my gosh. Is I don't think he's on the tier yet. Or did we did we already pass J Station? That was the, the 3 a.m. king, wasn't he? I don't, I don't know, but yeah. Victoria Vincent, known on mm -hmm. YouTube as Vone. Vone. Vone? I, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, I was, it, is an animator who uploads short animations every couple months. I've never actually heard of her prior to making this video, and I've got to say, I really <laughs> like her content. The animation style is really unique, and every video is filled with this comforting yet melancholic vibe. She's been making videos since 2016, and since then has amassed over a million subscribers, with some of her animations being featured on Adult Swim. And she's getting her own series on Fox called Dirt Girls. I would uh. really recommend checking her channel out. It's pretty cool. Navan's her her like animation reminds me of like gorillas and then something else um like gorillas the band of the the group what but what does her style remind me of what i don't know i can't think about what it's pulling me to but it almost feels like i've seen her work in other things but if she's only on youtube then i don't know but yeah i wasn't familiar with her up until this point either and you know, that's that's wild. That that brings me to another thing. In today's era, it feels like people with a million subscribers are just literally all over the place. It doesn't feel like such a milestone that it did back then. You know, when you seen someone reaching like 700,000 subscribers and things back then, you were like, whoa, right? But now I feel like there are so many people that have a million subscribers that you just don't know about that just exists and also you have to incorporate the amount of youtubers that you don't get pushed in your algorithm that are like from other countries and stuff that have millions of subscribers too so very interesting had to throw on the hoodie i was cold i have to fix my camera i'm kind of like low okay i feel like that's a little bit better <clears throat> yeah i feel like that's a little bit Alrighty, let's go. Noah takes a photo of himself every day for six years. I think I know this one. Noah takes a photo of himself every day for six years. <laughs> oh, a video of different. a man named Noah who takes a photo of himself every day for six years. Uploaded by a man named Noah Kalina, who was well known for taking a photo of himself every day for six years. He started in 2000, and for six years, Noah took a photo of himself every- Okay, I'll stop. This video was very popular when it was uploaded in 2006, and reached 27 million views. Wow. He occasionally updates with extensions to the original video, with the most recent one spanning 20 whole years. And in the video, you can see him going from age 20 to 40, which is really cool to see. There have also been other creators who have done a similar thing to Noah, inspired yeah. by his work, but no one's video is as impressive in size or scope. Will it blend? Will it blend is a viral marketing campaign created by Blendtec, a company that makes and sells blenders. In the videos, Blendtec founder Tom Dickinson shoves random items like. I'm sorry, but it just looks like he he is built for this. <laughs> electronics, golf balls, marbles, diamonds, and a human skeleton to the blender. Wait, wait, what was that last one? These videos are meant to prove just how powerful Blendtec blenders are and that they can blend pretty much anything. They've been around since 2006 and- 2006, so these were the beginning to the videos where everything gets um, pressed. You know what I'm talking about? Where they use the hydraulic press to flatten things into basically pancakes. This was those, or this was like the predecessor of those videos. <laughs> it started with blenders.
and still occasionally upload every now and then, which is always nice to see an OG YouTuber still uploading, especially when it's pretty much the same content they've always done. Yeah, that's insane. One tech. I don't Local 58 is a horror-based web series created by Chris Staub that began production in 2015. The series presents uh... a story through the lens of a fictional public access television called, well, Local 58. There's not really any continuity between the episodes besides the general theme of looking at the moon or the night resulting in... something. As well as references to an organization called the Thought Research Initiative. The series is pretty popular with none of the episodes being under a million views and it's considered the pioneer of the analog horror genre analog which is just stylized horror. editing to make it seem like you're watching a real video cassette or something. With other popular examples of the genre being the Mandela Catalog, The Walton Files, yeah. and Gemini Home Entertainment. Local 58 is also the best analog horror, I'm just saying. Local 58 is... Cod Black Ops creepy. PS was a YouTube channel created in 2010 that was run by a bot that automatically uploaded short clips of Call of Duty Black Ops, in particular the PlayStation 3 version. The channel was notable because at one point it was the channel with the most uploads to YouTube, with over a million under its belt. There was also another wow. channel called Cod Black Ops Xbox, which I'm sure you can figure out what the deal is there, and that channel had over 700,000. The channels both stopped uploading in 2015, and in 2020 they were removed off YouTube, not because of spam or anything like that, but because there were multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement. I guess Activision Blizzard just decided to get upset about the channel's existence five years after it stopped uploading. Old roofs needed. We're looking... Why exactly? I feel like things like that are like a... just like staple of the platform and to just kind of like be memorialized, but I guess I just got upset. You know, I could... Mm, uh, okay. No, he's talking about Corridor Digital. These dudes are awesome. I absolutely love their videos. I missed a little bit of the recording, like the part of it, but it's only like like two seconds, so it's all good. And Nico Pueringer that focuses on making short viral videos with CGI effects and pop culture references. Mm -hmm. They joined YouTube in 2010, and one of their first breakout successes was a video titled The Glitch, released in December yep. of 2012. In this video, several video game characters such as Mario absolutely tweaks here. I can remember this video literally scene for scene, dude. This was one of the coolest. This this one this made me want to get into video editing. Like, um, I started going heavily into Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro and just wanting to make videos like Corridor Digital was one of my biggest inspirations to just falling in love with YouTube and content creation in general. Just Mario and Minecraft Steve encounter a gun glitching through the ground in real life, which yeah. leads to the destruction of the world. The video got over 50 million views, and the shot of Mario's face distorting left its mark in the nightmares of 10 year olds who watched the video like me that freaked me out i was one of them janet jackson super in 2004 Bowl during the halftime show at the 38th super bowl justin timberlake accidentally ripped off a piece of janet jackson's outfit resulting in her teddy being exposed to the entire world you may have already knew about that considering how widespread and talked about it was when it happened however did you know that it directly led to the creation of youtube yes that's right PayPal employees Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, and of course Javed Karim all heard about the incident, but were pissed that they couldn't find any good footage online. Since back then you just- <laughs> You're lying, bro. You're lying. Just kinda had to see it live. So, these motherfuckers were so goddamn horny <laughs> that they made a site for sharing videos that would never be lost and they called it YouTube. And it turned out this it started as a dating site too, right? Oh my gosh. Everything starts off with a horny intention, doesn't it? Nah, not not obviously, but that is funny. Some of the most popular things were based on some horny shit. <laughs> That's stupid. It's kind of wild that this is the origin story, especially since YouTube will blast your fucking brains out if you so dare show a titty on the platform. It could also be our <laughs> Well, there's weird corners of the internet. I bet he gets into those later in the other tiers, but there are full uncensored things on YouTube that you can find. But I guess YouTube's algorithm or like, like just something about YouTube cannot detect some of these videos, but no, you can find some full blown dark stuff on here. Argued that the incident like, also yeah, led to the creation of Facebook sure. since it launched three days after the incident, though that could wow. just be a coincidence. That Either way, it's a perfect representation of how you really can do anything you want if you have enough fighting spirit. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to it'd be hard to make a description or describe what kind of fighting spirit they had when wanting to make YouTube. But it does truly prove that if you got the will to do it, where there's where there's a will, there's a way, and they were willingly <laughs> horny. <laughs> I don't know, but all right. Nyan Cat, yeah. Meow, 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 you probably know what this is by now, but in case you don't, Nyan Cat is a looping pixel art gif of a cat with a pop tart for a body, flying through space sharding rainbows. The original yep. gif comes from a site called LOL Comics made by a man named Christopher Torres, also known as PR Guitar Man, although there it was originally titled Pop Tart Cat. He stated that the original reason he made Pop Tart Cat was because he asked in a live stream what to draw, and one person said Pop Tart, and another said Cat. So he just combined the two. The original wow. song is a Hatsune Miku song called Nya 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 Nya, created by a Nico Nico Doga user by the name of Danny Well. It was then remixed by a user named Momo Momo Mo, who made a cover with the Utau voice Momone Momo. Then all it took was Sarah June to pair the two, and then we have the video you know today. Nyan Cat has had many different variations and remixes, along with pretty popular parodies, its own mobile game, a website where you can endlessly watch Nyan Cat loop with a timer, and... <sighs> Yeah, it was one of the first old viral videos to be sold as an NFT. Tragic. Not NFT. NFT is like the AI armada now. Jesus. NFTs are like the everything is cake me or trend when that was going on where everybody was just making everything cake. It's like all the old things have become NFTs. It's just a trend to take old things and make them NFTs. But I hate Hey, whoever turned it to an NFT, it's the original creator that has to do it, right? Hey, I mean, hopefully they got a big bag off them non-fungible neon cat tokens. <laughs> Jesus. Nobody Here is a YouTube video uploaded by a user called Sunset Corp. It features this cool looping footage of an abstract roadway taken from an obscure arcade cabinet called Taito Laser Grand Prix. It also features this music that samples the Lady in Red by Krista Berg, but slowed down. Now I know what you're thinking. This just looks like some vaporwave video. Why is it here? I actually thought the same thing until I looked close at the upload date. July 19th, 2009. You see, Sunset Corp is a channel run by Daniel LaPayton, also known as 10 Tricks Point Never. The song used is actually from his musical album, Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 which is the album that's often considered the first Vaporwave album ever. The album actually came out a year after the videos on this channel were uploaded, so this YouTube channel is the exact birthplace of the Vaporwave genre, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, that is sick. End, End of, of the world, world is a flash animation created by Jason Windsor of Albino Black Sheep all the way back in 2003. He basically just talks about how we're all going to kill each other through means of nuclear warfare. Apparently, the video is created in response to the U.S. invasion of Iraq, which happened soon before the video was created. Either way, the video is pretty popular and had over 14 million views before it was deleted to re-upload on a higher resolution. It's honestly still one of my favorite videos on the site, and it's endlessly quotable to this day. A sequel was uploaded 15 years later called End of the World, probably for real this time, which comments on current events like the presidency of Donald Trump. It was uh, definitely a sequel. What was that? Obedece a la Morsa, or it's a Obedece a la Morsa. English nice. title Obey the Walrus is another one of those viral Obey videos meant to be creepy and unsettling. It features a oh. distorted version of the Itsy Bitsy Spider nursery. So I've seen this, but never understood or knew what it was to rhyme with the Star Fox character Andros singing. After a couple seconds, it cuts to footage from The Goddess Bunny, a 1994 documentary about the life of transgender entertainer named Sandy Crisp, who had her body disfigured when contracting polio soon after her birth. The footage then cuts oh, to a picture damn. of a walrus, and then the video ends. While Sandy Crisp herself has nothing to do with the creation of the video, there's a bit of backstory behind who made it. The description has a bit of insight into the history of the video, and it reads, Obey the Walrus, known in Spanish as Abadece a la Morsa, as a video that was allegedly created by a Latin American cult known as La Morsa, or the Walrus. And it is said that bad things happen after watching the video. Many people mm. brush the description off, saying it's just some 
creepypasta bullshit, but after a closer inspection, it might be true to some extent. Obviously, I don't know how true it is that bad things happen after watching this video. That part just sounds like some, ooh, cursed video, Sonic.exe, ooh, yeah. type bullshit. But the original uploader of this video has some strange religious cult-like tendencies that ran a bit deeper than just some edgy bullshit for the sake of a creepypasta. It's a bit of a mm. rabbit hole that I can't fit in the mere entry of an iceberg. We do have over a thousand entries to cover, Jesus fuck. I'll just link this video by Internet Investigator in the description that covers it pretty well. That's the war. <laughs> Seinfeld Spitstain is a good Blitz. username and. Abadese la Morsa. Gonna go say that to my roommate because she's Spanish. Let's continue. And a channel on YouTube who makes these strange, poorly rendered 3D animations. His first breakout success was Super Smash Bros. Universe E3 2013 trailer, uploaded only a few hours before the actual Smash 4 trailer went up, which featured this shit. I don't know. The video was popular enough to be featured on Kotaku, which when this happened, he changed the description of the video to Kotaku is scum, which is pretty based. Although easily his most famous video would prove mm. to be Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour, in which Hugh Neutron kills his wife and then has his head sloshed off by a flying pizza. Just another day in the life of Jimmy Neutron, I guess. This Jimmy Neutron video would prove- So he's kind of like another <laughs> surreal entertainment sort of animator? be a massive success, getting over 18 million views and a lot of fans, including me, apparently. Jesus fucking Christ. Seinfeld Spitzstein would continue to That's upload amazing. until September of 2014, when he uploaded one final video titled Creation. I kind of want to go see that video, but maybe In not. In 2010, a Team oh, Fortress Scout. 2 Team SFM Fortress animation was uploaded titled Heavy and Scout Think They Are Birds. The video was fairly popular, but one part stuck out in particular in the eyes of many. This frame of Scout's face became a really popular meme, and a lot of people <laughs> set it as their profile pictures right around the time YouTube began showing profile pictures in comment sections. Oh my gosh, it's so many different versions of the face. It dude. kind of invaded YouTube for a bit. In oh my god, <laughs> Sasuke, bro. <laughs> but that's basically it. It was just a funny picture. I love that. I, I love little things like that. Footage of a man who spent 41 hours trapped in an elevator. Footage of a man who spent 41 hours trapped in an elevator is exactly what it sounds like. It was uploaded in 2008 by The New Yorker, although the incident actually happened nine years earlier in 1999. Production manager Nicholas White was riding the elevator on a Friday night when it stopped suddenly leaving him alone in the elevator for 41 hours. The security cam footage was then taken and sped up into a time lapse, which led to the video we know today. Wow. Our Mine is a hacking group that's known for hacking big names on many social medias, not just YouTube. They got their start hacking people's Minecraft account, but they slowly started getting more ambitious. In 2016, they hacked Markiplier's YouTube account and uploaded this video basically stating that, uh, we gotcha. Throughout the summer of 2016, they proceeded to hack some huge Twitter accounts like Wikipedia co-founder Jimmy Wales, Twitter founder Jack Dorsey, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, and Google CEO Sundar Pichai. They also hacked a platform called VidIQ that several big YouTube accounts such as iJustine and Beijing Canadian used to change the description to hacked by our mind team. In an interview, they stated that they don't do malevolent acts, but are simply showing everyone that no one's safe. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Are you driving way less than you used to? <laughs> Some of these ads that pop up, dude, they're getting more creative with ads nowadays, though. I like it is this like crank that all on the fuck give me some milk. oh no let's smack that whoops okay i had natural light but i have turned on my light now that is the debut single of the rapper soldier boy released in 2007. the song was iconic not only for the oh, steel like drum work in the background but also for the dance fad it caused the music video was uploaded to youtube in 2009 has over 500 million views and its popularity is on sites like youtube is even represented in the music video which i think is pretty meta charlie the unicorn <laughs> is a series of flash animations the remix he has of crank that soldier boy right now on like under the the audio just has me so that finds its origins in 2005 on Newgrounds, created this. by Jason Steele, which 
Wikipedia really wants you to know that he made it. Originally created as a birthday present for his mother, the plot follows a lazy unicorn named Charlie who was badgered by a blue unicorn and a pink unicorn for him to come with them on their adventure to Candy Mountain. He eventually goes with them to Candy Mountain and the short ends with both of his kidneys stolen. The short was massively popular on both Newgrounds and YouTube and spawned four sequels resulting in a one hour long saga as well as its own line of merchandise. Moi Moi Palaboy is a channel created by two brothers from the oh Philippines named James Ronald. The music under is so, so distracting, dude. Ronald and Rodfield Macasero. They got their start in 2007 doing lip sync videos to popular songs at the time, like Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne and Backstreet's Back by the Backstreet Boys. They got over half a million subscribers by the next year, which doesn't sound like much, but that's really good numbers 2008. They made their first yeah, TV appearance insane. in the same year on the Filipino show Bubble Gang. <laughs> What he said is basically what I was just saying. Like back then, half a million subscribers is like, damn. But like nowadays, it feels like everyone has that. Broadcasted on GMA Network. They've released albums and started many TV shows and movies and are now contract artists with the GMA Artist Center. As a non-Filipino, mm -hmm. I haven't really heard of them before making this video, but it seems like they're quite big in the country's pop culture. That too, that's funny that they're Filipino. So like the whole thing. Oh, Viacom. In 2007, Viacom <clears throat> International, the parent company of Paramount, MTV, Nickelodeon, and many others, sued YouTube and by extension Google for $1 oh. billion. The reason was that many people uploaded clips, just clips, of Viacom-owned properties such as SpongeBob and South Park without authorization from them, and they further alleged that YouTube's moderation did nothing to stop this copyright infringement. They said that there were over 150,000 unauthorized clips, with 1.5 billion views total. A lawsuit this big at such an early point in YouTube's lifespan was nearly catastrophic. Yeah, I can possibly imagine. the biggest threat to the platform's existence to date. This led YouTube to create the system known as Content ID that analyzes videos for possible copyrighted media such as footage from TV shows or unauthorized use of music, which also led to the audio swap stuff I talked about earlier. Viacom mm. decided that wasn't enough, and they still wanted their big boy bucks back that they apparently lost from a two-year-old platform. This lawsuit was a back and forth that lasted around seven years, eventually culminating in a settlement with no money changing hands in 2014. Wow. It, it, it is actually really crazy to see the history of the platform that we now use a lot or is like a big part of a lot of people's lives. You know, it's insane. Just like, I really do love YouTube. So like this iceberg is definitely perfect for someone like me. So definitely shout out to Elephant Man for recommending this series because it's crazy that like I really just love creating content and YouTube is so refined now. It would have been actually awesome to upload videos back in the day, but it had so many different like so many different um just things going on at life at that time, but everything works out. And it's just like it's insane to think about just the platform it was. Not that long ago. Truthfully, not that long ago. So, bronies. If you're new to the internet, you might not know what these are, but basically around 2011, a large adult fan base was started around the children's show My Little Pony, Frankie's yep. Magic. I'm not going to get into why this happened, since it doesn't really have anything to do with YouTube, but there's this one fan on the site named Mr. Davey. Mr. Davey would upload these animations about My Little Pony, the two most popular of which being called Cupcakes and Smile HD. Both of these videos portrayed Pinkie Pie as a genocidal maniac who's incredibly strong and bloodlusted. The videos were really gory and incredibly accurate to the show's style. Sounds Happy Tree Friends inspired. Style, which obviously was not a good thing if you were, I don't know, Hasbro's PR team. Hasbro got almost all of his videos taken down, although Cupcakes seemed to be restored at some point, while Smile HD was removed for violating YouTube's terms of service. What's interesting is that while digging, I couldn't find anything relating to Mr. DV is or where he is now. His location uh... is different on every social media platform he has, and he put a hidden message to the end of Smile HD about how Lauren Faust should respond to his meet and fuck email which is probably just a weird joke, but I still felt like I should mention it. Oh, of course you did, you horny bastard. Okay, so obviously this title's pretty generic, so there are probably a lot of videos on YouTube with the same title, but I think what this entry refers to specifically is this one uploaded in 2009 by a user named Chester Tyler 714 although apparently it's a re-upload the original videos made by a guy named Justin Martinez in 2006. Anyways, the video itself is in a found footage kind of format with our protagonist breathing heavily and apparently running through his house. The first clear shot we get is of his ceiling, where these ominous black hands begin reaching through trying to grab at him. 
He runs through more of the house uh -huh. with more hands uh -huh. growing out of the ceiling, windows, walls, and floors, and even an eye growing out of one of his walls. It eventually ends with this shot of a big mass of arms and hands that grows a face, jumps out of them, and starts screaming. Obviously fake, but still quite impressive for a homemade YouTube video in 2006. He made a post to r slash horror about how he made the effects, but when you click on it, it leads to a dead link. Sad. Either way, it'll still go down as one of the most legendary horror videos of early YouTube. Oh, this one's Catch huge. Catch is an unfiction horror series on YouTube created by Tony Domenico on a channel of the same name, spanning from 2017 to 2019. The first episode starts with the main character, Paul, booting up the game of the same name and explaining how it's an obscure PS1 game he just found lying around. The reason he's making the video is to prove to his friend that he wasn't lying about it. The game starts out as a pretty standard puzzle game, albeit unfinished, although after he inputs a cheat code, he discovers a darker side of the game. Oh. The series quickly gained popularity, with the first episode having over 2 million views, and the series spans 24 episodes. It's often considered to be one of the most elaborate creepypasta stories out there, and explanations videos by creators such as Pyrocynical and MatPat skyrocketed the series' popularity. Yeah, I watched Pyrocynical's video on it. Pierce Ruane, also known as ProAne 2 Forever or Sexman Films, is a YouTuber that got his start making videos in 2008 when he was 13. He would often make videos ranting about things that pissed him off, such as porn addiction, soldier boy, or as he called him, soldier bitch, and 50 Cent. The 50 Cent video was most notable uh, because he actually know, saw the video Proane made about him, and the two made a video where they met up with each other in New York City, which honestly I think is a crazy ass moment in YouTube history. Yeah, that's he uploaded fire. fairly consistently for a couple years before abruptly deleting his channel in 2016, although he still maintains a personal Instagram account. In early 2020, he made a post talking about his channel and why he deleted it. He said, I've never liked fame or the minimal amount I had. I prefer to fly under the radar, and that's a huge reason I left YouTube to begin with. My YouTube career is in the past, and it needs to be left there. I'm not 13 anymore. I'm 25, and living in the constant shadow of my youth has grown tiresome. It's sad, but we need to remember that while some early YouTube stars leaned fully into their newfound attention, for others, fame just wasn't for them, and that's okay. Yeah. Fred Figglehorn, also known as just Fred with a backwards R for some reason, is a character in series created by Lucas Cruikshank. The character yeah, is known for his this. voice being edited to be really high pitched and it's just generally aimed at trying to be annoying. The series got its start on YouTube in 2006, with the first video being called Fred on Halloween, and since then it became wildly popular with Fred being one of the first famous YouTube stars. He made a guest appearance on iCarly in 2009 with an- I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be really honest right here. I th think, all right, the fact that guy that he just said who plays Fred, you know, did his own thing, did something was like, you know, just, just went for it. I was about to build all this up to just say that I really just never really liked Fred or thought that it was entertaining, but I could see how people do, I guess. An episode titled I Meet Fred, which led to a long partnership with Nickelodeon, where he got three entire movies and a TV show. Even though by that point it was like 2012 and no one really cared about Fred anymore. Today, Lucas Cruikshank runs a considerably large YouTube channel with over 3 million subscribers and the channel was apparently sold off to some kids? Although they haven't uploaded since 2015. Also, one last thing about Fred, in the movies his dad is played by John Cena and I think that's funny. Literal, Literal music. music videos are these parodies where people will sing over a song's lyrics to match up what's going on in the music video. The first known iteration of this trend dates back to 2008 and was a remix of AHA's hit song is. Take On Me by a channel named Dusto Magneto. The video reached yeah, over know. 15 million views and since then spawned a whole trend with countless others doing pretty much the same thing with other popular iterations being Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler with Arms Wide Open by Creed and... Mm -hmm. Oh god damn it. Literal music videos also inspired people to do other things with a similar format like Tobuscus's literal movie trailer series. On YouTube, there's a surprising amount of just blatant piracy running around. A lot of software, yeah. movies, and video games you can literally find for free just by looking up the name of it followed by download or something. Although the only problem with this is that there's a lot more fake stuff than legit stuff, so you really gotta be careful, but trust me when I say that there is real free downloads on the site. Not gonna be giving examples, obviously, because giving it publicity will just make it more likely that YouTube takes it down. But, like, dude, trust me. 
and maybe being at risk of like kind of promoting piracy. Do you remember those video responses I was talking about earlier where you could comment on a video with your video of your own? See, I well, think this should be a thing. When those were still so. around, they actually did have regular use by one group of people known as the Reply Girls. These women would create video responses to popular videos and would talk for like a minute about how they liked the video with not much substance to add. These videos were still massively popular though and gained what thousands upon thousands thumbnails? of views. Why do they get so many views, you ask? Because nothing on the internet sells better than fat tits. Reply girls were- <laughs> I love how Swigwin just lays it down, dude. Huge point of contention in the early 2010s and were criticized by many content creators as well as getting massive dislike bombs. After YouTube removed video responses, Reply girls pretty much went extinct. Damn. I'm Hmm, Hot yeah. Diggity Demon, now often known as Max G, is an animator who got a start on Newgrounds as early as 2004, although he didn't find his first breakout success until 2009 with the release of his Jerry series, which he also uploaded to YouTube, about the life of a depressed man named Jerry. After that, he began making a series called Wacky Game Jokes for Kids, which features a character named Mickey, who was a small-time crook living in the slums of NYC, until he was stolen off the streets by an evil corporation called VGV. Although, perhaps Max's most famous work is his parodies of My Little Pony, known as the Pony.mov series. Each entry in the series follows the same naming scheme, like Apple.mov, Shed.mov, Swag.mov, focusing on each of the six main characters of the show at the time. These are made in the era of YouTube, where making dark parodies of children properties were super popular, and that's what these videos were. They were super popular, with all of them being over 10 million views, and even being noticed by the creators of the show. After finishing the Pony to MOV series, he would go on to make more parodies of popular things such as Five Nights at Freddy's, Animal Crossing, and Super Mario Bros before settling on a series called Brain Dump in 2016. Brain Dump started as him reviewing movies until it quickly turned him to having therapy sessions with himself represented by a talking cartoon ghost. This video <laughs> is brought to you- I'm honestly- hang on. I'm honestly kind of just sitting back and enjoying a lot of the content and not, you know, feeling the- uh, pressure to just try to be transformative every single moment. I mean, I definitely can, but I'm kind of just enjoying this to sit back and watch it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. Again, uh, er, at least in this uh, uh, this part. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, shout out to Swigman again for putting this all together, dude. It's, there's a lot of content in, in video. It's just like a lot of content condensed down is what I'm saying, so. Yeah, hope you guys are enjoying so far. And yeah, let's go. Now, being one of the oldest animators on the site, he's gone through a lot of different forms of content, but it seems he's finally found that Brain Dump is what he wants to do on YouTube. Or not, you can never really tell. <laughs> Liam Kyle Sullivan is a YouTuber and comedian who gained popularity in 2006 with the release of his video Shoes, where he cross-dresses as a teenage girl named Kelly who's obsessed with shoes. The video, along with Liam's other works around the same time, such as Let Me Borrow That Top and Muffins, were quite popular, getting millions of views. Today, Liam uploaded to his YouTube as recently as two weeks ago as of writing the script. Wow. It looks like it's literally just the same video as Muffins, but with breakfast loaves instead. Apparently, it's an advertisement for some bakery. Huh. Angry German Kid. Angry German Kid refers to a video from 2005 of 14 year old Norman Kuchanowski smashing his keyboard because he's mad at Unreal Tournament. It's another really popular YouTube viral video, but what many people don't know is that it's completely scripted and the German kid in question isn't actually angry. Yeah, in the video, Norman. I'm pretty sure, yeah, the same one with the kid who the whole thing about the Halo, like his mom deleted his, like, Xbox account or something like that. Like, you know, the kid who shoved the remote up his cheeks, but didn't act. And apparently that whole video was staged too. But it's playing. It, it, sometimes it felt like, I can't lie and say that there wasn't a smidgen of doubt that these videos were real because, or yeah, wait, I can't lie if there wasn't a smidgen of doubt that the video was real. Like, my brain is just going. Yeah, I, I, I woke up very early today and just started shooting videos. I don't know why. I've been up since five. But anyways, getting back <laughs> getting back on topic, yeah. Like when you see these videos, the first thing that comes to your mind, at least it came to my mind, was someone really shoving a remote up there, you know, because of an account. Now I couldn't understand 
getting very emotional if you've had a lot of time invested into that. Anything you that you invest a lot of time into and then walk away from hurts. But you know, sometimes it just feels like a bit much. But you know, playing a character named Leopold Slick, Leopold and the angry German Slick. kid is actually one of many scripted videos he released under the name. Today he still wow. uploads to YouTube under the name Hercules Beats, where he released rap music and bodybuilding videos. And <laughs> he's fucking ripped, by the way. Wow. Thank God damn. Rebecca Remember that like Patrice Friday. Wilson guy I was talking When I seen Fred, I was like, this video is probably going to be here. Come on, tier two, who would have parents pay money to him so he could turn their kid into a music star. Well, perhaps his most famous or infamous work was none other than Friday by Rebecca Black, released in 2011 when she was 14 years old. The song got really popular because it was almost laughably bad. Very uninspired lyrics, bad auto-tune, a weird rap solo by Patrice. It was just not great by any means and everyone made fun of it. So what came of Rebecca after this? Well, despite all the harassment she got, she kept making music with pretty yeah. moderate success. I think it's pretty cool how she kept going despite the near universal hate she got for the music video, even though, in my opinion, it was more Patrice's fault than anyone else. In 2021, to celebrate the 10th anniversary, she released a hyper-pop remix of Friday in collaboration with Dylan Brady of 100 Gex. Yeah. Who's Dylan Brady? Salad Fingers is an animated series created in 2004. Salad Fingers was so creepy. I feel like everyone remembers Salad Fingers because either had a cousin or a friend that was like, hey, do you know what Salad Fingers is? And I said, like the first time I heard about Salad Fingers, I probably had the same assumption you did. Maybe not. But like, I was like, like salad on your fingers, like salad-y fingers, like, you, like sticking your hands in salad and it's like you have salad fingers. Like what? I'm pretty sure I was I've been told this by two different people. It was my cousin that introduced me to the series that was like going like 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 I think I don't know if that's a part in Salad Fingers because it's like a distant memory now from any of these things. But it was a cousin and then somebody I think at school introduced me to this. Or by David Firth, originally posted to Newgrounds. It features a thin green man named Salad Fingers who lives in this strange desolate world. His only friends being his finger puppets. It's yeah. one of the first super popular animations, especially when it was brought over to YouTube in 2009, and definitely one of the weirdest as well. There are a lot of theories of what Salad Fingers yep. means and the symbolism of everything, but honestly, I just figured it was weird for the sake of being weird. I'd honestly yeah. say that in a certain way, it laid the groundwork for all the animations today that are designed to be creepy or unnerving. The right. Eight Sleep Pod Cover. The Eight Sleep Pod Cover. Single ladies. Single Ladies is a song released in 2008 by Beyonce. Being a song by one of the most influential music artists of the 21st century, it was obviously pretty popular. But where it really gained popularity was from the music video released on YouTube in 2009. The video is black and white and features Beyonce dancing along with two backup dancers in a blank void. It currently stands at over 800 million views and it spawned many people on YouTube to make parodies of the song and imitate the choreography. Dr. Octagonopus is a parody of Doc Ock, the Spider-Man comics, originally featured in I'm a video called sure. The Laser Oh my gosh, I think this shit was funny. I think he was like freaking Dr. Octagonopus. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's this video. Holy moly, I'm going down memory lane. Bro. Which is a collection of shorts yeah, with the punchline of literally every single one being the shoot the hoop, I'm a fire and a laser bomb. thing. Dr. Yeah. Octagonopus is heavily featured in these where he'll just show up, say his name, and then go wah. Dude, I used to laugh so hard at this, bro. Oh my gosh. I don't know why, man. I think it's just funny. It wasn't even like that it was Dr. O Octagonopus. It was it was the name, I guess how he said it, but it wasn't the character himself and then the shoop de whoop meme. I don't know. Something like things getting hit with a random Kamehameha is just hilarious or a plasma wave of light. It just, there's something about it that warms the old nostalgic soul in me that this is so funny, bro. He was a very popular source to use in YouTube poops, as well as just people editing videos to have him show up at the end. <laughs> also, something I noticed about this entry is that the person who wrote his Know Your Meme article really, really wanted to know is spelled Octogonopus rather than Octagonopus. Oh, I just thought Dr. it was funny Octogon they were so pressed about it. 
Little Baby's, Little Baby's ice. ice Cream is or was an ice cream company based in Philadelphia. They were most notable for yes. the, this is a- This is what I was talking about earlier. This, this is what I meant. This was such an interesting video. Special time ad they posted on YouTube in 2012. In the video, a person made of ice cream uses a spoon to eat their own body. The narrator talks about their skin and pores are glistening thanks to the fact that he eats little baby's ice cream. There are a couple other ads on this channel about this company, but none of them are as popular as the This Is Special Time ad. It's a common misconception that there's some creepy, deep hidden message behind this video, but no, it's just a commercial that is intentionally made to be creepy. Why'd they make it so creepy, you ask? Well, we're still talking about it, aren't we? That's effective advertising. True. Oh, I like turtles, yep. I Like Turtles refers to a local news clip of a reporter at a festival interviewing a kid who got zombie-themed face paint. When asked his opinion of the festival, he responds by simply saying he likes turtles. The reporter just kind of awkwardly backs away, not knowing how to respond to the situation, and then the clip ends. The 17-second clip gained over 7 million views and was featured on shows like Tosh.0. Please don't tell me it's going to be an NFT in the future. Fedoras Are Awesome is a classic, classic video to throw into cringe compilations, mainly because it's fucking cringe. Released by a channel named Adam the Alien, it features a classic fedora wearing neck beard and has four friends sitting on. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I know for a fact they have one of the most bomb. D, D campaigns running right now <laughs> the couch he starts saying fedoras are awesome over and over again and then his other friends chime in with other instrumentations noises i don't even really know how to explain it you kind of just well, gotta watch for yourself the video was originally uploaded in 2013 and stands at over a million views with far more dislikes than likes but you know what's impressive unlike almost every single video that has historically been put in cringe compilations adam stuck to their guns and never took the video down which i simply have to respect yeah i, I do too yeah i do too Ghost Caught on Tape, also known as Scary Rocking Chair or Rocking Chair Scary Pop-Up, is a 22-second clip of a shot of a green rocking chair originally posted to- See, Elephant Man, you're lying, man. He still shows the pop-ups, man. He just doesn't show the- he doesn't sh put the audio and put, like, the clip- You know, like, when somebody does a compilation and then just puts it? Dude, I don't care, man. I'm 23 in horror games, bro. See, there's nothing like ho horror movies aren't really scary to me, but horror games are a different level of immersion that freak you out. doesn't matter how old I'll be. It will still make me just absolutely shit myself. You ever see the Outer Middle show or people like that? Now, nah, horror games still mess you up, and horror videos are kind of like that similar thing where I feel like horror short horror videos do it way better than actual horror movies. I don't know why. No, see, the pop-up is going to happen here. I'm not watching it, bro. Got to save myself from this torture. The YouTube by a username SC World starts out with a green tinted footage of a rocking chair and the rocking chair begins to move on its own, leading the viewer to look closer. But if they do that, they're met with this woman that appears out of nowhere and crawls very quickly up to the camera before displaying the face from the exorcist that's using the scary maze game and stuff like that. Classic screamer video dating back. I don't like screamer videos, man. They traumatized me. Doesn't. Like the um, whole Jeff the Killer link. Sex and over 70 million views. This one always freaked me out the most because of the sudden way that the woman moves. It's just freaky to me. Yeah, it's just the, the contorting of her body and everything. Uh... Filthy Frank. Filthy Frank is a musician and retired YouTuber. OGs. He began uploading to a channel called Disaster Music in 2009, although he didn't create the Filthy Frank character until 2011. I feel like there's not really a good and accurate way to describe his content. He kind of just does whatever he wants, but mainly focuses on a sketch comedy type routine. And what he's most well known for is being edgy. A lot of these jokes featured are what could be considered racially or ethnically insensitive, like the 100 totally accurate accents from all around the world video, <laughs> which, I mean... Yeah. In the channel description, he talks about the character and how he's the embodiment of everything a person should not be. He's anti-PC, anti-social, and anti-couth. 
He behaves and reacts excessively to everything expressly to highlight the ridiculous of racism, misogyny, legalism, injustice, ignorance, and other social plights. So really, Filthy wow. Frank was never necessarily created for bigoted purposes, but rather to poke fun of those who hold those opinions. Who hold those opinions, wow. Whether or not you believe that is up to you, but it's still kind of hilarious that people unironically became racist after seeing a dude in a pink jumpsuit saying bad things about minorities. Filthy Frank was massively popular on YouTube, having over 7 million views, frequently collaborated with other YouTubers like iDubbbz and MaxMofo, released an album under the name Pink Guy, and created the Harlem Shake trend, which was a massive trend on YouTube where Wow, he created it? Wow. People would dance to a song of the same name. That got references on things like The Simpsons, and even programming that was meant for kids, like the Nickelodeon's Kid Choice Awards, which is a bit weird when you remember that it came from this guy. It and came from that. That is absolutely wild. Wow. 17, he retired both Filthy Frank and Pink Guy and released a book called France of the Filth that ties up the lore of the series. He wow. then rebranded himself and became a singer slash songwriter known as Joji. Yes, that Joji. Yep. Mm -hmm. Never listened to any of his music after he became Joji. A lot of people said a lot of his music was really good, but I don't know, to each their own. I, I don't, I, I never even actually watched Filthy Frank as well. Like, I. Kind of was more in the gaming sphere of YouTube, but I was still around for a lot of the horror ARG or internet analog ARGs, horror ARG, like all of that, just everything. Why am I saying horror ARGs? Horror content, horror like screamers, all of that. But I was more into the gaming side of YouTube, but I still tapped into some of the commentary like Leafy and iDubbbz very rarely. Like I barely, I came into knowing who they were around. 2014 2015 to 16 like memeulous some of those guys like that's where i came started to know about this stuff but filthy frank i remember just hearing really like really becoming aware of him after his retirement when he retired the character and everything and heard a bunch of different people say like it was from you know just not wanting to be attached to that, that it was like mentally messing with him, just a lot of things. So yeah, I didn't really know too much about him, but I knew the character, but I did not know that he started the Harlem Shake either. That's insane. And I, I kind of feel like I a, a little bit do believe that he, the character was meant to poke fun at people who hold misogynist, misogynistic and racist beliefs and all that, because they are really stupid. So I can see somebody creating a character, but I'm assuming you wouldn't believe that, I guess, if you knew him personally. So maybe it was rooted in actual beliefs he had. I don't know. Because I would wonder why if someone's stating that that's what the character was made for. Or maybe like a blanket kind of like a, a shield. Like a shield of protection where it's like, okay, if anybody came by and seen this, I updated the description sort of thing. So it's like, you know, the character's like satire stuff and for comedic purposes so like you can't really attack me because i specified that but i feel that fans who paid close attention to you would know that you updated the description to that or something like that do you kind of get what i'm saying here so it's like he put now a disclaimer that the character was meant for this but that wasn't always there which then you could always make the argument that he, he forgot i uh, you see what i'm saying i don't know I would like to believe that he was poking fun of all that stuff because honestly, it is stupid. We're all human, you know? So. Username 666 is a horror video uploaded in 2008. The video starts with the protagonist typing youtube.com slash 666 and just the keep refreshing button. Initially, it. nothing happens, but they keep clicking refresh. YouTube starts becoming all red and distorted, but they keep refreshing until they find the fabled channel. It starts playing these freaky videos, one with distorted red hands, another with these spinning fetus looking things. Eventually, the user finds that they can't escape 666's page by closing out of the window or going back or anything. And then eventually one of the red hands reaches out of the video frame, then the video ends. Pretty groundbreaking stuff for 2008 and the visuals are pretty cool. The video is uploaded by a user named Nana fucking bunch of numbers, also known as PR Pito. A <laughs> he said Nana fucking bunch of numbers. Japanese user who frequently makes these kind of horror videos. The second most viewed video on the channel is called My House Walkthrough, uploaded in 2016, where Nana does a house hey, tour. The house nah. is dark and just coated in a thick layer of grime, and sometimes the rooms repeat. It's something straight out of Silent Hill. I'd recommend checking it out if you're in the market for- Imagine that this inspired PT. 
When I turn left at the end, there's another more videos on YouTube. The other big thing on Nana's channel is Piero Pito first playthrough of Minecraft, where it's just him wow. playing Minecraft for the first time. <laughs> I love this channel. Yeah, Bye. that's. I love that. I love stuff like that. It's like the the Minecraft is just such a curveball. I love Double Rainbow. One of my favorite. Just Double cause... Rainbow is a video uploaded in 2010 by Yosemite Bear 62, also known as Hungry Bear 9562. Real name Paul Vasquez. Filmed away, right, right outside Yosemite National Park. Paul sees a double rainbow and begins freaking out with happiness. Like, he is really getting into that double rainbow. He's yelling, screaming, moaning, praising. I think Shmo Hoyo remixed this. And God. Like, God damn, I wish I was that happy with anything. The video has almost 50 million views and also got a Songify version done by Shmo Yoho. The same guy's behind Bed and Treater song. Chocolate Rain. Chocolate, Chocolate Rain. Chocolate Rain is a song. Another one that, like, again, still, when you're in, you're in, like, a certain corner of YouTube, but you've definitely seen Chocolate Rain. ...in video created in 2007 by Tay Zonde, and now stands at over 133 million views. The song's lyrics at the time were perceived as strange and random, even though it's about institutional racism in the United States. And in the video, he moves away from the mic to breathe, which is clarified in the caption. The video got really popular for a mix of reasons. For some, it was the lyrics. For some, it was the breathing thing. and others, it was his deceptively deep voice. Either way, it's a certified YouTube classic. Certified YouTube? Oh, There's yeah, a whole Slenderman host ARGs. of web series on YouTube that are actually ARGs relating to the famous character Slenderman, where viewers will often be tasked with interacting with the media in some way to progress the story. These include, but are not limited to, Marble Hornets, created all the way back in 2009 by Troy Wagner, Everyman Hybrid by Vincent Caffarello, Jerry Koval, and Evan Jennings, Tribe 12, created by Adam Rosner, ML Anderson Zero, created by Michael Anderson, and Dark Harvest Zero Zero, created by Michael Chris Anderson, Chris Hammerberg, and Heather Faller. Slenderman's obviously a pretty popular character, so it doesn't surprise me that there's so much horror content on YouTube about him. Yeah. Leave Britney alone. Leave oh, no. Britney Alone is a video created by Cara Cunningham in 2007. In the video, she starts. I seen this and was so confused what this was. Crying and pleads the viewer to stop shitting on Britney Spears for her comeback performance at the MTV Video Music Awards. The video gained international attention along with lots of parodies and criticism. Cunningham has been accused of making the situation about herself and that it was really just to seek attention, although she insisted it was a genuine reaction. Collins Bear Animation is an animation created by third year game development student Colin Sanders. It's a 10 second video that features a crudely made model of a bear. That's what this is, bro. Dancing in various locations set to Happy ah. Monkey Dance from the Mother 3 soundtrack before ending it off with a black screen that says Colin Sanders, thanks for nothing. The description elaborates saying that the uploader was actually Colin's friend and that Colin made it as a final animation for an animation arts class. He used all the techniques taught by the professor and this was the finished product. Oh yeah, and Colin got an A. Nowadays, Colin works at a game dev studio called Massive Damage Games. Content, Content farms are these large channels that push out a <laughs> I can't, bro. Fuck ton of low quality videos in order to trick the algorithm into getting their videos recommended. Examples of content farm channels include a lot of channels we've talked about in tiers prior, such as Five Minute Crafts, True Story Animation channels, and even El the True Story Animation. Okay, Elsa Gate. I think I could just make out what it is. It's obvious. Like, look at this image. Elsa Gate videos could fall under this too. There are also some wow. channels that literally just read off Ask Reddit posts with text to speech. All these channels have the common theme of being really easy to mass produce and get a lot of money off of. Yeah. Daft, Daft Hands. Hands is a video tribute oh, yeah. to the song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger by the music duo Daft Punk. The video was created in 2007 and features uploader Austin Hall spelling out the lyrics to the song with letters he wrote on his hands with a sharpie. The video got very popular, easily being one of the most viral videos of the year with over 74 million views. The video even got noticed by Daft Punk themselves, as you can actually find the video in the official Daft Punk YouTube channel's favorites playlist. Austin Hall even got on the Ellen DeGeneres show, which I think is a pretty good thing. I just think it's a W because that is like... <clears throat> Stretch it up. Stretch it up. Been here for a while. One guy had such a just an idea. That wouldn't even cross my mind to do with a song. But one guy had that idea. He said, I'm going to send it. And it goes back to that thing we said in the beginning. With there where there's a will, there is a way. 
this dude said, I'm going to do the entire song. Like, just like, you know, the accuracy he had to have, the amount of takes that it probably took him. Imagine he came out and said that was one take. Ain't no way, bro. But, you know, just the the ability to do that. And this is, again, why I love YouTube, because he shared the video on this platform and then even got noticed by Daft Punk and the whole Ellen thing. That's pretty cool. Like, I don't know. That's just, ah, it's one of those things, dude. That's why I really do love YouTube. This entry refers to an alleged found footage of a man who took a camera into the infamous catacombs of Paris, France. I think I've seen this. He starts walking around, finds real human bones, which, if you don't know, is to be expected from the catacombs. But something weird starts happening. His breathing starts getting heavy, he starts running faster and faster, and eventually he drops the camera and doesn't go back to pick it up. People's minds immediately went like, ooh, it was a ghost or something, but honestly, it could have... I laugh at these two because I always say, how does the footage get uploaded? He's a little bit paranoia from the claustrophobia and, you know, the human bones. And he could have just hallucinated something that wasn't there. The whole thing could have also just been a hoax done for attention since the footage was part of an ABC documentary and the man was never identified. It's an unresolved mystery to this day, so it's really up to you whether you decide to believe it or not. Oh, he dropped the, he dropped the camera and then left it? Well, so was it uncovered? I, yeah, I don't know. Up above the... Oh no, not these. I'm getting these recommended now. Happy birthday. Body light to draw. Body light to draw. Cool. All right, now we got Quaint. Run by British animator Paul Curtin is another one of those weird animation channels on YouTube. It features such high brow, classy animations like Flying Bum or I've Done a Poo or My <laughs> Bum Goes the Fart Song. Or maybe, my bum, it is stinky, it goes. There's not much else to this. He basically just uploads animations <laughs> about farts. What? Poop, balls, asses, boobs. You know, it's it's toilet humor. Oh, toilet humor. Jesus, we finally fucking get to this one. Yeah. Gangnam Style is a song by South Korean musician Psy, released in 2012, with the music video coming out in the same year. The music video got crazy popular on YouTube, and even just pop culture in general. It was the first ever YouTube video to hit 1 billion views within only 6 months of its release, and has had countless parodies, references, uses, I mean, it was fucking everywhere. There is an entire Wikipedia page on Gangnam Style's influence on pop culture. How many single songs have entire Wikipedia pages on their influence on pop culture? Spoiler alert, it's only fucking Gangnam Style. I can't overstate how crazy popular the song was in 2012. You know how K-pop is like way more popular in the United States than it was maybe 15 years ago? And how nowadays the genre is like almost inescapable? I don't know if there's anything else to attribute that to other than Gangnam Style. I'm assuming this video is only in tier 3 because it's an older video. But also that's bullshit because me at the zoo and Rickroll are up there too. Gangnam Style possibly has more worldwide cultural influence than anything on this entire chart. Gangnam Style was everywhere, man. I wonder if he even knows the amount of influence it had, dude. Like, like truly <laughs> can um, comprehend just, dude, another thing I heard in school so much. Just like the Harlem Shake. And last but not least, I thought I'd end this part off with one of the more sentimental entries on the list. Taya777. This was a Japanese YouTube channel that, by all accounts, should have just been a normal video game music channel. But it was so much more than that. You see, Taya didn't upload very many videos, but the ones he did upload didn't feature the game's box art or logo like most do, but rather a loop of a location from the game the song is from. Hearing that out of my mouth now, it doesn't sound that crazy, but the uploads Taya did of songs like Quarters of Time from Chrono Trigger or Sticker Bush Symphony from Donkey Kong Country 2 are two of the most relaxing videos on the platform. What made these videos even more special is that the titles were all in Japanese, although the main audience were English speakers. This meant that most people would not find these videos just by searching up the OST title, but rather it would have to be recommended by the ever so mysterious and esoteric YouTube algorithm. In the comment section of these videos, people would acknowledge this and classify the videos as a checkpoint, like in a video game. Some would leave a comment to check in and talk about the way their life is going at the time of the comment. 
It was honestly magical, and there was nothing really like it on YouTube. Which of course made it all the more heartbreaking when this VGM re-upload channel, specifically, got wiped from YouTube thanks to copyright strikes. Sure, there are re-uploads where people do the same thing for the most part, but it just isn't the same. And all those people checking in, all those comments, they're all gone. Fuck Nintendo. And thus concludes part one of tier three of the YouTube iceberg. This was a really fun one to make and a huge nostalgia trip for me, so I hope it was for you too. While I did sound pissed that he put fucking Gundam style too low, I can't stress enough how thankful I am to Potted Planet for making the iceberg in the first place because without his Reddit post, I would uh, not. Oh, he has 444 at the end of his name, crazy be able to make this series. Tier 3 is easily my favorite so far, just as I expected. It's a nice healthy mix of some well-known creepy stuff, as well as well-known older videos in general. Look at that popular MMOs is right there. Dude, this is like everything on YouTube, dude. Is this coming up next? Yeah, I like Turtles, Daft Hands, yeah. Oh my god, the Caramels Denson? Is that what it is? I remember this so much. Sky does everything versus serious nonsense uh, oh this is popular mmos versus coca lista felix colgrave youtube it's over party i remember that i don't remember what it was so i remember some of these yeah shrek is love shrek is life wow uh, all of these crazy I actually didn't expect this video to be so long i mean we're only on part one and this script is longer than both parts of tier two combined <laughs> While I'm writing this script, it's actually, uh, 4 a.m. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it off here. YouTube's cool. I love my subscribers. Don't forget to like and subscribe or whatever. Peace out. <laughs> I think Swag is pretty cool. Um, shout out to Swag. Go show him some support with covering this whole entire thing. Um, I'm not gonna lie, like watching the video like and thinking about all the aspects that are are in it like all the clips and videos that are in it kind of worry me a little bit about copyright and copy claims i don't know a little bit like i don't want to stop the series i want to cover it all like but i'm not actually sure i might just stop and watch it and enjoy it to myself like after but if you guys really really want me to continue it i might but i don't know i'm thinking about that and like there are a lot of things that, you know, he's showing in his videos that I commend him for, but like so many different aspects that it's like all under fair use, but I don't know, it feels, something feels weird about it or about me continuing. I don't know. I got to go with my feelings on this one. So we'll just see. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Shout out to Swegman again. I definitely love YouTube too. And I love all my supporters out there. Anyways, I'm out of here. Much love.